The best evidence on microcredit comes from randomized control trial studies. In a randomized control trial, the researchers take two roughly comparable groups, and in this case, they allow one of those groups additional access to microcredit and the other group not. After some period of time, the two groups are studied, and the differences in outcomes are taken as some measure of the efficacy, or lack thereof, of microcredit. Do see our separate video unit on randomized control trials, but for now, let's look at the evidence on microcredit from these trials. So far, the evidence is mixed. There's a well-known paper by Dean Carlin and Jonathan Zinman. It looks at over 1,600 individuals in Manila, in the Philippines, there's an average loan of $225 in value, and they then study these individuals after 11 to 22 months. They do find that microcredit increased borrowing among the group members who had additional access to microcredit. However, the rate of business activity went down slightly, and furthermore, the rate of reported subjective well-being also went down very slightly, but still, it did not go up. On the plus side, it seemed that microcredit made individuals better able to cope with risk, it strengthened community ties, and it boosted access to informal credit. That is, if you had the option of borrowing from the microcredit lender, you would find it easier to get credit from your immediate friends and neighbors. Perhaps the most comprehensive study of microcredit comes out of MIT, and this took place in Hyderabad, India. Half of 104 slums were randomly selected and given additional access to microcredit. It was found that this increased their borrowing. It was also found that 15 to 18 months later, these groups had spent more money on durable goods, including machinery. Most importantly, the number of new businesses increased by one-third relative to the group that did not have additional access to microcredit. Interestingly, the effects depended on the kind of household. Households which already had businesses or which were inclined to start new businesses, they're the households which spent more on durable goods. Households which had a low propensity to become business owners, they actually increased their spending on non-durables, including temptation goods, such as alcohol and cigarettes. Overall, the study found no impact of the microcredit on measures of health, education, or women's decision-making. Further studies are required, but the Banerjee and Duflo paper closes with the following sentence, quote, Microcredit, therefore, may not be the miracle that is sometimes claimed on its behalf, but it does allow households to borrow, invest, and create and expand businesses.